Since July 26, 1990, the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, has been enacted to provide accessibility and accommodations to disabled Americans across the country. And before this, in 1973, was the first federal civil rights protection for disabled people, Section 504. This law is supposed to protect people from discrimination on the basis of disability. And despite how commonplace this might seem today, it took a lot of hard work to get these rights, including protests like the 504 sit-in, located inside San Francisco's Health, Education, and Welfare Federal Building, where protesters, many of whom were disabled, stayed for 26 days until the law was passed. But today, this doesn't cross most people's minds. We aren't taught about these efforts in school, and we aren't taught how to interact with ADA accommodations either. And we tell ourselves, who parks in an ADA parking spot who knows they're not supposed to? And even when we slip and do the wrong thing parking there just because there aren't any other parking spaces and we know we'll be in and out in just a few minutes, we aren't really thinking about the implications of this. Disability rights do not automatically mean disability justice. Let me clarify. Just because a certain right has been granted does not mean the system has changed or that oppression has ended. Disability rights aim to give the specific human rights that everyone deserves, no matter their level of ability. But disability justice is a little different. There's a million different ways you could explain disability justice, but one of the key ideas is changing how we view disability. Where, instead of essentializing disability as people who need a wheelchair, to show that there's more to it than that. That disability is a broad spectrum, all with different needs. That just giving some rights doesn't really fix the inherent issue of how society views them. But disability rights are important, don't get me wrong. Things like ADA parking spots, ramp entrances in the buildings and elevators, and accessible bathrooms are all necessary, with huge efforts like the 504 sit-in being a stark example of just how much people need these. There are aspects that can give certain disabled people the chance to take the same opportunities non-disabled people would be able to achieve. But just because everyone has physical access doesn't mean that all of our problems are solved. It goes beyond people still viewing disability as a negative or a downfall that befalls on people. Because we either aren't taught how to interact with the rights ADA grants, or we don't think about the implications of taking advantage of them, like quickly parking in an ADA parking spot we don't have a permit for. And we make disabled lives a lot more difficult by doing this, while also causing harm to disabled people, enforcing false narratives and assumptions along the way. ADA parking, in particular, is something that generally everyone knows what is, but doesn't truly understand. We see the stick figure wheelchair user on the signs above the parking spaces or painted on a pavement, and automatically understand it as a spot for wheelchair users to park. I remember asking my mom what the signs were for as a kid, and her explaining that it was handicapped parking, and I understood it as a parking spot for people who looked like the sign. And I'm not the only one who understood it as this. If I was, then countless people who have a permit to park there but are not physically or quote-unquote obviously disabled wouldn't be heckled for stealing a parking space they don't deserve and forced to either explain their disability to a complete stranger or risk continuing to be attacked or the situation to worsen. I spent years seeing sports cars that I thought could not possibly be wheelchair accessible and silently being judgmental to whoever owned that car, since despite the fact that I couldn't see in their windshield, I just knew they were parking in that spot unlawfully. But a majority of this way of thinking could have been avoided if it weren't for this one symbol, the ISA. The ISA, or the International Symbol of Accessibility, is the little wheelchair symbol we see for ADA parking spots, for ADA accessible bathrooms, and pretty much anything accessibility related. 
chances are, no matter where a person is from, they've seen this symbol. Created for a design competition by Rehabilitation International and brandished by the International Organization for Standardization, this has been used globally as a symbol for accessibility for over 50 years. It's used so much to the point that, at least in the United States, usage of any other symbol to represent accessible spaces could break compliance with regulations under both the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Architectural Barriers Act. This is under such strict regulation that even slightly altering the symbol can be a little taboo. Some designers and professionals might welcome the chance, whereas many will only be okay with some small details, such as the arms holding the wheels instead of seemingly pushed out straight or non-existent, or making slightly curved edges. But even this is only possible for indoor directional signage, or signage that is privately purchased. For ADA parking, these signs are provided by the state government, where in the U.S., each state has their own statewide signage for ADA parking spaces, and there is no other option. While it's great that these spots exist, the symbolism doesn't create justice. It gives the impression that these spots are only for people in wheelchairs, and the only exception would be someone who maybe uses some specific crushes instead, but even this requires some reading between the lines. Even the name of the parking spaces creates confusion. The only reason my mom, who works in the sign industry, explained it to me as a kid as handicap parking, despite handicap being a very dated term, is because legally, this is what they're called. She called them this because in the field, that's what everyone calls them. And if you want to get a permit to park there, you're often applying for a handicap parking permit. What the parking spots aim to do is important, what it achieves is something else entirely. But not everyone who judges people silently for thinking someone is stealing a spot is inherently wrong. The problem enters when we don't know who is supposed to be parking there. In my home state, North Carolina, those eligible for a permit include those certified by medical professionals as being unable to walk without assistance or who have restrictions caused by lung disease, defective vision, or cardiac, arthritic, neurological, or orthopedic conditions. And yet, we only focus on the symbolism. Most people aren't aware of the other side of those eligible unless they themselves become eligible or they know someone who is. So, because they don't know any different, they see the person parking at the grocery store who is eligible as some horrible person stealing a space that someone else lawfully deserves. This idea is prevalent in ADA parking, but it's more than just parking. It applies across nearly all accessibility rights, and yet, just because a right is given does not mean it is enforced. ADA stalls are provided in bathrooms, and generally everyone knows what they are, but how many people know that even when all of the stalls in the bathroom except for the ADA stall are being used, if you don't need that stall, you're supposed to wait for another one to open and not use the ADA one, in case someone who needs it comes in. How many people, even when the entire bathroom is open, go to the ADA stall specifically because they like it more than the others? When people park in ADA spots without the permit, just because it's a better parking spot, how often are they thinking that it's safe to because the chance of someone needing it is low? When 504 was being implemented in the first place, there were a lot of hesitations to it, to the point that President Nixon vetoed it entirely. It was viewed that it would be too expensive to reap the benefits. The president has vetoed a bill setting up a vocational rehabilitation program because he said it would cost too much. It uh, would be just impossible in terms of its financial cost to put in elevators or ramps and all these stations. Just costs would be horrendous uh, in terms of their total. The problem here is, as with all of this question, how many people would really be served by it? How many people would really be served by it? That was, quote, William Ronan, then NYC Transit Authority. This same view, that the amount of people benefiting from it would be too low to justify the cost, is the same view that leads people to park in these spots, despite the 30 million people in the US who need ADA parking. Parking that, according to a survey by the Accessible Parking Coalition, 90% of respondents said was essential to living an independent life, parking that they have trouble finding nearly 70% of the time. 
and some stores provide specific parking spots alongside ADA, which are for specific people but aren't monitored by police or given fees for unrightfully parking, like veteran parking spots. These spots aren't labeled as for disability, but many veterans return from war with physical or invisible disabilities, or even both at the same time, and because of the stigmas associated with disability, often do not seek aid for these. And even outside of disability, it's something specifically to thank a specific group of people for what they risked for their country. And yet, I've personally witnessed someone who, despite never having served any military time, parks in that spot every time they go to the store, laughing at how often they get thanked for their service. They park there solely because it'd be an inconvenience to park anywhere else, and they don't have to prove that they actually are a veteran. What makes this so complicated is, what do we actually do to fix it? It's easy enough to say, all right, we need to make people more aware of what specific accessibility rights are for, that they're for lots of different people with lots of different disabilities, and teach non-disabled people how to properly interact with these accommodations. But how would we even do that? What kind of symbol could we change the ISA to, not only because of the limitations of changing a symbol that is used globally, but how do we create a symbol that is immediately recognizable as for people with disabilities, while also encompassing all different types of disabilities, including those that are invisible by nature? We could throw the symbol away entirely, instead just putting up a sign that says ADA, but that doesn't ensure that anyone who sees it and doesn't know what ADA means will actually look it up, instead of just parking in that spot anyways. And if we were to just get rid of the permit entirely so that anyone who needed to park there could, in theory reducing the risk of being heckled for this idea of unlawfully parking there while not being in a wheelchair, how do we ensure that we won't have situations like above? where non-disabled people park there because they're just running in. It'll be super quick. Where the chance of someone disabled showing up and needing the spot is low. Or even someone pretending to have a disability, just for the benefit of a closer parking spot. And this isn't even considering the fact that we still find resources for these parking permits that use out-of-date and offensive language, without even realizing what it's doing. I don't like to think that these kinds of things happen. I want to think that everyone would do what is best for others, knowing that if they don't need a parking space, they would rather park further away than to take a much needed spot from someone else. But the sad fact is, there are people who simply do not care, or don't realize what's wrong with what they're doing. I have walked through the parking lot, passing the ADA parking spots, and glancing in the window of a car parked there, my attention caught because they don't have a permit hanging in their window. There's a reason fines are listed at the bottom of ADA parking signs for parking without a permit. Some people actually have to pay those fines. And the fact that these fines are what encourage people to not park there is another mess entirely. It's like the idea of not speeding because you don't want a ticket, not because speeding creates life-threatening situations. It creates the narrative that you shouldn't park there not because it's the right thing to do, but because you'll get in trouble and have to pay a fine. I wish I could end this with a simple answer, stating exactly what to do to fix this problem. But I can't. Because I just don't know. I don't think there is a simple answer to this. The way our system currently works has disabled people being thankful for the opportunity to access spaces at all, whether or not they're screamed at or attacked in the process, or if the accommodations are even available for them when they need them. The rights exist, but do nothing to get rid of preconceived notions and ideas about disability, especially when people aren't even aware of what the rights are for. Disability is still essentialized as being in a wheelchair. It's seen as something lesser than or pitiful, something that people need to overcome to be normal, something that's uncommon and rare to actually encounter. People take advantage of accessibility accommodations because their automatic assumption is that the chance of a disabled person needing it when they use it is low, a stigma that often goes under the radar but is incredibly harmful. At the end of the day, when accessibility accommodations are misused, we're not thinking about the implications. 
These are all issues that I cannot offer concrete solutions for. But the only way to solve a problem is to recognize that it is one in the first place. Even if it takes flipping systems entirely, I hope that one day we can have justice beyond just rights, beyond just being thankful for accommodations and unenforced accessibility. So for now, if you don't have an ADA parking permit, or you don't need to use the ADA accessible bathroom, maybe just don't. Because chances are, the person right behind you could need it as soon as you took it. And you wouldn't even know, because right now, we're just not thinking about it. Thank you for listening. This was Mackenzie James, a disabled creative currently studying at Elon University. Find more of my work at the link in the transcript or other episodes on Spotify.